Hey everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to color grade with our brand new pack, which is called DaVinci Color Panel for Loop Deck. Now with this pack, you can take your existing Loop Deck CT or Live device and use it as a professional color grading panel. Now there is a setup procedure, and we've got a video, and I'll put the link below, uh, of how to go through the setup procedure. It doesn't really take that long. So first thing, of course, we're in DaVinci right now. I'm in the edit room. We, we want to go to the color room first. So we will switch to the color room. And one thing to keep in mind is when you've gone through the programming, you will have set it up with a monitor configuration and screen resolution configuration already in place. As you can see here, I have uh, my DaVinci uh, window is floating at the moment. Well, when I programmed this, I programmed it with uh, the DaVinci window maximized, so I'll maximize it. And I also had this icon tray at the bottom, I had icons and labels shown. You can see how uh, the bottom pane will shift up and down when we switch between those two. So that's important because what we're doing when we program it, we're, we are recording your mouse position. And if we uh, operate the DaVinci software in a mode other than what we programmed, you'll find that some of these will be off. So we recommend that when you do program, it's probably a good idea to use show icons only because when you go to uh, minimize the screen and then maximize it again, it will always keep show icons only. Not the case if you show icons and labels. Okay, so let's get to some color grading. So on our Loop Deck panel, and once again, this is going to be the same whether it's Loop Deck Live or ACT device. This is our main page presented to us. Before we do anything, we want to make sure that we go to the second page of our main, and it can be quickly accessed by the, number, the round number two here. And we want to load the script. So the system uh, reminds us that the color panel is now loaded. And then to get into color grading mode, we're going to click activate. The activate button is there on the second page of the main. It's also here in the round number seven. That's also activate. So now the Loop Deck color panel is live and ready uh, to take our actions. So let's go back to the main page. And we're going to start off with a very simple primary uh, color grade. So we're going to click the, uh, the primary color wheel. It takes us to that in the DaVinci software and changes our workspace in the Loop Deck device itself. Because we've already gone through the programming of all of these workspaces, we can select any command we like and we can immediately start controlling that command. So let's, for example, say we want to change the hue of this. We select hue and then we can rotate our horizontal dial and you can see that our hue is being changed. Same thing with our shadows. Click on shadows and now our shadow control parameter can be adjusted. Additionally, uh, you'll see on the CT device we have our A, B, C, D square keys. This allows us, we programmed it so it allows us to navigate between the touch pages for A and B, so I can go to the next touch page by clicking on the B button, back using the A button. Uh, and as you know, you can do that just by swiping the screen. And the CD buttons will navigate through if there are different dial strip pages in which uh, this, this workspace uh, does have additional dial strips. So we can select D to go through them, and of course you can swipe to go through them as well. So selecting D, we can go through these different dial strips. So let's just select our, our gain just to show you. Uh, on the top right here, we have the gain is set for this dial. We can press on the dial, and then we can adjust the gain. And we can adjust the gain horizontally with that control. But because gain is still active, we can use the horizontal, the dedicated horizontal and vertical dials to adjust that parameter. Think of the dedicated dials here as fine controls. You can see when I move gain here, it's very, very fine. When I move it here, 
it's a lot more coarse. And of course we have all the controls that are available in the interface are available to us here on the color panel. So I've selected gamma, we can adjust the gamma. Select red offset, now we're moving the red offset. Move to the next page, we now have the individual RGB channels for lift gamma gain available. So green gain, now we're moving green gain. Our lift function, etc. So that's how quickly you can control and you have all of the controls at your fingertips. And we can always bounce back to our main page here. If we want to slip into log mode, you see that uh, selects the primary log wheels for us and opens up the log workspace. Now we can say switch to our highlights color wheel and now we can adjust our highlights color wheel. Next page over we can select our mid-tone green log. Go back to our main page here. We also have HDR as well. We can get into HDR color grading. All the controls are here. I just want to point out, you'll see that uh, along the top here on the DaVinci interface, they've built the interface to only demonstrate four color wheels at any one time. But, and global always stays in place, but the, uh, the first three color wheels will change depending on the navigation along the top there. And we've already mapped the navigation. So selecting the navigation keys here takes us right back to, you see the first three are black, dark, and shadow. When we select the right navigation key, it slides over one. And now we have dark, shadow, light. Again, we have shadow, light, highlight. And then once more, we have light, highlight, and specular. So whatever color wheel is shown to us in the interface, when we switch over to the next page, you'll see that we have the color wheels identified as HDR 1, 2, and 3, and global. Global always stays in place, it never moves. But in this case, because light is the first HDR color wheel, when I select HDR 1, I will be adjusting the light color wheel. Now if we switch, let's just switch a couple back. Now instead of being light, the first color wheel is dark. Now when we switch over and we select HDR1, we're now affecting the dark value. And the light value, as you can see, is still there in HDR position 3 and it's unchanged. Now let's switch back to our main space. One thing we can do in any of these color spaces, we have a, a reset. I'm going to just reset our color here. Now also on the main workspace, if we go to the second page, we have a few controls to add in additional nodes as well. So we could add in an additional serial node here and work further. So let's go back to the main page. We're going to go into our, uh, let's go to qualifier. And let's say we want to select the blue of this boxer's uh, jersey and gloves. So we're going to operate the picker, take our mouse, select, and then we'll turn on highlights so we can see what we're doing here. Now we can also do a picker add so we can add to the selection. And let's say that's the selection we want to work with. Now we can move over to the qualifier hue saturation lightness. And this allows us to fine tune in the HSL uh, pane here. So we can select center and we can adjust where the center of that blue selection is. We can change the width. We can drop down to saturation. We can change the, uh, the low saturation, for example, tighten that up, loosen it off. Next page over is in uh, gets us into our RGB value. So if we go back to, let's go back to our main qualifier page, we can select qualifier RGB and it selects it for us and takes us to that workspace. And once again, all of these parameters are available to us as well. Additionally, take another page over, we have all the matte finesse controls are available to us as well. Let's say clean the black, and we have that available to us. 
clean white. You see we're adjusting these parameters. We can soften it with the blur. And we can jump to the second pane of matte finesse. And we can do denoise, shadow, etc. Adjust all these parameters. And now we'd be able to color grade just that mask. Go to hue, and we can move the hue of that selection that we've made. So that's qualifier. Now, if we want to do some additional work, we can switch over to a different shot here. Let's find, we'll find this shot here. Let's say we want to run a uh, mask and track that mask on this lady's face to brighten her up a little bit. So we can go into window here, select a circle window, and we can go one page over and we can do all the adjustments we want to this window as well here. We can change the size, the aspect ratio. Let's just change the aspect ratio here and pan it and tilt it up. And let's say that looks good. Let's just put a bit more of a uh, softness around it, widen it out, and there we go. And we can also just check it with our highlight. Say if we're happy with that, we go back to the main page and we can go into tracker. And since that window is currently selected, we just track forward on it, and it follows the, uh, the track for us. And we have all the tracking functions available here. Uh, we can uh, make selections on what we want to track, additional functions over in our, like if we go to our stabilizer, this menu becomes available to us, and we can control the different parameters of stabilize. Additionally, we have a workspace for keying, where we have all of the parameters available to us here. Gain, we can change the gain of the key. Let's say the blur radius. We can change these values, etc. Go back to the main page. We have sizing available to us. Let's go to a different shot here. And we have, of course, we can flip the image. We can reposition using pan and tilt, change the width and height, etc. All these are available to us, including our, uh, our output blanking as well. Also, we put in two more additional things up here. We've got a uh, printer light uh, is available to us. So we would activate printer lights and we can then adjust our red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, controls here right from within loop deck. Go back out and we also have a save load memory where we can uh, load and save our color grades and bring them up when desired. One additional note I want to mention is that if you have a trackball you can use this in place of the dials on the loop deck device to control all these parameters as well, including the color wheels. So that's a very quick overview. Uh, you'll find it actually runs a little deeper than this once you get working with it and find your own uh, method for how you like to work. And certainly this panel uh, accesses more functions than any other panel that exists out there other than the 30K panel you get from, from Blackmagic themselves. So that's it. That's the DaVinci Color Panel. I hope you guys uh, find it will be useful in your color grading sessions. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.